everybody's connected through technology. We're happy that it all integrates everywhere into every part of our lives, but we've got this new problem, and that is scams are everywhere. So today we're going to talk about some of the stuff we've seen, some tactics, and things we've been talking about around the office that have happened to people, things to watch out for. This is the Money Master Podcast from Brindle and Bay Wealth Management with Tori Tenhagen, Connie Davis, and certified financial planner, Nick Davis. Welcome back to the Money Master Podcast, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Connie, along here with Nick and Tori. And today we are actually talking about something that we've been discussing for quite a long time, scams. There are so many types of scams. And so we just kind of want to have a conversation about it just to make people more aware. I know we've all received some sort of text message or email or a phone call that you kind of scratch your head and you're like, hmm, something seems off. Yeah. Right? And they're they're getting smarter and smarter. Yeah. They're getting harder and harder to distinguish. So yeah. I think that's one of the biggest things. And the reason we decided to do this podcast is the more people yeah. are sharing their experience and talking, the more you go, mm, I want to watch out for that. <laughs> you know, like I need to be atten- attentive to that. Right. I think the thing that probably will help protect people the most is if when something happens to you or you see it happen to talk about it mm-hmm. so that other people can become aware of it because they're getting tricky. Mm-hmm. They are like, I'll tell you the one I, I almost got sucked in last week. I got a text message from what appeared to be UPS and they said, we are missing some information for your delivery. And I get a lot of deliveries through UPS. So at first I was like, Hmm, okay. And it made me think, what do I have coming? And then I, I didn't do anything with it. And then I got the same thing the following day. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to copy this tracking number that they sent me. And I'm going to go to the real UPS site. Yeah. I put in the tracking number and it wasn't valid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I almost got scammed. So when you went through another, you basically yeah, did ver- not verify. click on it. So when, when we get these weird emails, a lot of times I'll ask Tori, what's that website you use? And it's like some... I'll have to link it. We can link in the show notes, we'll put it in the show notes, but there is a website like Nord. Some of those Nord now Nord is one of the ones that they use for scamming, right? They'll say yeah. your your Nord is <laughs> expiring, but so watch out for that. But yeah, there's there's some ways you can verify that the URL kind of seems yeah because sketchy. then I go to that web web page and I paste the URL into it, and then it says whether it's legit or not. Yeah, it'll it'll tell you if there's red flags to it or not. Yeah. Well, that's smart. I didn't know about that. Yeah. So like th- something just happened to me. I mean, there's so many different op- examples of what's going on, but. Something that happened to me last night. Uh, I couldn't sleep, so I checked my email, which I shouldn't do. <laughs> and it said YouTube said that our YouTube channel had lost some privileges because it didn't, you know, we violated community policy guidelines or something. And it looked legit and actually so legit, like across the board legit. And I'm still wondering if it is or not, but some of those links actually go to YouTube's frequently asked questions or appears to be. Mm-hmm. And however, it said that it took away certain privileges. So what I did was, you know, we went into our YouTube channel and um, we checked to see if those privileges were gone. Like, so we're basically verifying yeah. that. And then we emailed YouTube. We didn't even like respond to, to that email. email. Yeah. We went to c- customer support and asked them like go completely around it because it was just without thinking about it, I would have just clicked and started right. because what it said is in order, what got me was it says one of these things happened, right? And then it would like, send you the community guidelines. But then it says in order to, you know, make this right, you just have to verify your identity. Like, okay, now there's a, an issue, right? If they're going to ask you to verify your identity. Well, so. and that's happened to us on our, our Facebook ad account. Like you've sent me this, yep. what is this email? And I look and you click through thinking, hmm, but then it starts asking for your driver's license and you're, and you're yeah. like, that's weird. And I've, you can do some, some quick searching to try and verify, right? Like the image may just be slightly off. Like check yeah. the logo to see if it really matches or see if the, the URL is slightly off. They'll put a extra letter somewhere. And so usually you can, you can right. or you can do some, like, is this a common scam? Yeah. Like if I get this email, is this a, a known scam? And you can kind of do some research. Yeah. So th- this well, is, ex- oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I had, a, I had a phone call two weeks ago and on my caller ID, it showed up Chase Card Services. Okay, Chase, right? I was like, why are they calling me? And I answered and 
they said that, you know, because I have good credit, always pay my credit card on time, that they're going to reduce my interest rate which doesn't really matter because I pay it off every month, but okay, always nice to have a low interest rate, right? <laughs> so um, he's he asked me for the last four digits of my card. Yeah, common, not a big deal. Everybody knows that. And five minutes into the conversation, he was like, okay, now what are the first four? And I was like, wait a minute. Whoa, wait you a didn't minute. tell me about this. No. Jeez. And, and I thought to myself, they're trying to get the mm-hmm. entire number throughout yep. the whole conversation. And then I was like, this is dumb. This is such a waste of my time. I pay off my credit card every month. Who really cares? Okay, click. Goodbye. I'm done. It was just so, so weird. Yep. But you do so... many, many, many times, right? There's that little intuition that you feel, mm, something's not right. It's I okay to be skeptical this. nowadays. It yeah. is. I-, I had to apologize to our banker. Because when we, I got scammed a month ago, my card said I bought something from Apple that was like, you know, $91. Mm-hmm. And it was a Saturday. And we uh, we actually emailed our bank and our bank emailed back that same day. We have yeah. a, a great, great bank. And, um, and when I called them on Monday to like talk to them, like when she was asking me information, I was like making sure she was real. Like mm-hmm. almost... Yeah. No, you tell me the information. I'm not going to tell you the information. Right. Well, that's that's another, you're saying that that's another great way of, if they call you, find the actual bank number and call them back. Right. Like don't, yeah. you verify that you're calling them because exactly. they're, they're using, that's one of, on, yeah. one of the, on our list of AI scams is they'll use phone numbers and voices that sound legit. So it's like, let me hang up and call you back and call the actual number and see if they even know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. 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 So, the, so there's a list of different scams that we have. The, what we're talking about a lot is the phishing scams, you know, with in emails and messages and trying to get credit card information. Passwords. Yeah. And then there's fake websites that are another thing, but sometimes they're even connected where you go to look it up and then the, the website itself is fake. Right. Very, well, very and they're, and they're again, very good. I mean, that fake websites are very common with crypto. Uh, we've yeah. seen that of, you know, you have this account and it looks like yeah. what you're seeing, but it's one letter off right. on the URL. It's one, right. it's not a dot .com, it's a dot, you know, whatever. It's just very, not something you'd catch unless you're really, really digging. Especially with crypto, you got to be careful. These exchanges for crypto, um, the foreign exchanges are not under the same level of, of jurisdiction or regulation as some of the well-known exchanges. And so there's two things that happens there. One, they, there's a fake exchange that looks legit or it's the legit exchange, but it's just not safe. And even though they got 5 million customers, so to speak, that doesn't mean they're safe, you know, and, and we've seen people get hurt. Well, um, and we, we say that, that even about, you know, financial products and vehicles and things like that. But if it's too good to be true, it probably is. So yeah. if, if they're offering like really low prices or really low or they're, yeah. you know, they're up this many, you know, it's, it's probably, if it, like you said, if you get that gut feeling, yeah. Probably should listen to it a little bit. Yeah. What about, so we had somebody this year, we actually had, unfortunately, I, I, we know two people that walked through this sad thing of tech support scams. They're very common. Yeah. So can you tell us what and happened? Because I know oh, you guys dealt with that. Yes. They can, I mean, it's the same type of thing of, you know, this email, verify this, you're, 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 it's about to expire or you need to update your payment information. And it's often something that you might have some, you know, support or VPN or something on your computer. Um, but then they try to chat with you or zoom with you or well, call they and they, they actually computer. get access to your computer. Yes. So like it's cause it legitimately happens when you're like on with Apple care, Apple care will like g- ask get for access, access, access and they'll fix share. your computer mm-hmm. for you. And you know, if it's not Apple, like if it's somebody else, mm-hmm. then you've got a, a really major problem. And we had uh, two people we know this year that had that happen and it just destroyed everything for so long mm-hmm. uh, because it was like the deepest level of, of, you know, infil- infiltration into yeah. these people's lives. Hey there, quick break to let you know that each week I send out an email. It's called Nick's Memo, super creative name, I know, <laughs> but this isn't your normal market commentary. It's my thoughts to help you make sense of what's going on in the financial world. So for example, I'll give you a few of the last week's headlines. One of them was called Life Cycle of Bull Markets. And I talk about the four phases of bull markets and how you can tell which phase that we're in. Or another topic the week before that was called Comfort is a Moving Target. And I talked about the crises that we hear about, that we see, that we genuinely face all the time. It, it is disturbing. But how to put that into perspective and be okay, regardless of what we're hearing and seeing. 
And one more topic for you uh, a couple weeks before that is uh, what does it take to feel wealthy? And that was based on an interesting study about how much money people have and yet they still feel they don't feel wealthy. So what does it take to feel wealthy? So if you're interested in getting that every Friday, then all you have to do is text us the word memo. That's M-E-M-O. And you're going to text it to our business line at 214-988-9178. That's 214-988-9178. And we'll get you subscribed to the weekly memo. So what, what other scams have you guys? You know, I just remember the one that happened with us, Nick, several years ago with your grandma. Someone called yeah. your grandma and was saying, I have your grandson. And Well, no, they actually convinced her that it was me. And they said, Grandma, I'm in trouble. I'm in jail in Tennessee. Yes, that's like, what I live it was. in Texas, right? But, and I don't want my mom to find out. Can you please Western Union me some money? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like at that time, I was in my boy late thirties. Was years ago. Yeah. No, I mean I was in my late thirties, maybe. And she started to Western Union. I think five or ten grand. She called me and was like, "Is Nick with you?" And I'm like, "No, he's at home. Like he's fine." And <laughs> but she well, was so close to sending money. Yeah, and yeah. I think the financial advisor in her life somehow reached out uh, tactfully to mm-hmm. my mom and just kind of let her know what was going on. And the problem with this is that, you know, when when somebody gets scammed like this, they feel shame and they mm-hmm. don't want to talk about it. So then they just bury it and then maybe it happens again. Like they're right. they're vulnerable to it. Well, and that's why we started with if it happens, talk about it because people don't know it's happening either. You're probably going to help someone else that would have fallen to the same. You feel so stupid. Yeah. And yeah. I'll, I'll tell you and the one that so, makes people feel the most. It, it shouldn't because ultimately they're, they're, like I said, they're getting really good. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. The, so the talk about the romance scams, cause that's the one that I think creates the most shame in people. Um, mm. We have, we've seen this with our own eyes. People pretending to be people online. I mean, there, there's a whole, there, or there used to be a whole um, show on, was it MTV or something the about Nigerian princes or whatever? Well, they would, they would go, they would, you know, I've, I've met this person online. I don't know if they're yeah. real and they go and find out. And sometimes they were not real people or they were like yeah. a man mm-hmm. posing as this woman or, you know, like they're not, yeah. re- you're not always getting who you're talking to on a screen. Like people who look really, really legit, but especially because AI could make somebody look different possibly. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And that's what's, that's what's wild. Like we don't know anymore. And they can right. also simulate voices. So well, that's like, what I'm going to say. If your grandma was getting scammed years ago on yeah. a phone call, mm-hmm. they've gotten even better. Yeah. They can actually mimic your real voice. So in the finance world, if you, in the old days, which was just like last month, you know, <laughs> if, if you <laughs> wanted to make a, make a trade or make cash from your account, you'd email uh, or a phone call. Okay. Or a phone call would also require in writing, you know, and still does. But it would be acceptable to take a phone call and say, okay, client says they want to make so much cash to send to their account. But I got to tell you, that's caused our firm to Mm -hmm. rethink that because, you know, what if somebody is faking a voice? Right. Mm -hmm. So what we have actually put some measures in to, in some cases, like, hey, we're going to drive over to your house and say hello. Or we've got a couple of little code things that we do with that client that helps them to know, like us to know, like there's no way AI could know that. And so, right. So that's your legit. Or I'm going to call you back on the number I have in our, yeah. our system for you. No, you know, like knowing mm-hmm. that it's not somebody that, right. because and that's the thing that AI scams are doing now is I'm on the side of the road. I need you to Western union money for a tow truck or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then they call that person back and they're like, no, I'm at home. What yeah. do you know? I mean, Tori, you have dealt with this where you've asked people those types of questions like, is this really you? Like, how have they responded to you? It's hard. I mean, again, it's a shame thing of, yeah, it's really me, but it's becoming so prevalent. I, I, they would rather us ask than not, right? They would rather us verify. I mean, some of the people, some of the people that I've talked to that I've had to ask some of the verifying questions, they say, I mean, they've said, I appreciate Mm -hmm. that you're taking the extra you know, precautions, you know, yes. Is it frustrating? And does it seem kind of silly because, you know, we know each other, but you know, they appreciate it as well. Yeah. And I think, you know, like the, the whole two factor verification, Mm -hmm. you know, we all hate getting that extra text message, put in this code before you can, you know, get whatever information Yeah. it's, it's an extra step, but it's helped. 
we personally know how it has helped people. It's um, have so. you you know there's been a lot. Some people will say it's more popular to protect yourself to freeze your credit, um, but I've also heard some negative things about that. Have you heard about that at all? I yeah, I haven't heard anything conclusive one way or the other. I mean, I know it causes a headache. Um, when they want to buy something. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's, I think that's what a challenge is. So, you know, we have to do some stuff to protect ourselves. And, you know, I mean, these are just the ideas. There, there's a couple of things that we all know. We all know we got to change our passwords and yeah, and don't use the same password everywhere. You know, we use uh, LastPass here. But um, what are some other things that we can do to protect ourselves? Well, I mean, the first thing I've, I've said it a couple of times throughout the episode, but hang up and call back. Verify. Yeah. I mean, across the board, not even just calling back, but put the URL in a site somewhere and see if it's legit. Don't, yeah. you know, don't follow through. If you have a gut feeling, click out of it and yeah. think a minute and <laughs> do some research. And even now, I mean, nowadays you can Google, like just even the wording in the email and say scam question mark and see if other people are putting it out there. Like, yeah, this same wording I got, or, yeah. you know, you can, you can verify. What about there's, there's a scam. I don't know if it's a scam, but I get these texts that say, Hey, how are you? Or oh gosh, it says, I've gotten those too. Oh, well, we haven't talked talk- in a while. Right. And I don't respond back because I think there's something that triggers if you respond back. And I just, I yeah, delete I it. just delete and report. So there's definitely got to be something to that. Well, and people can get your, I've been the last week or so, my number's gotten put somewhere on something where I'm getting the, uh, just like every couple days I'm getting consistent texts yeah. about you, you get this and it's the wrong name. It's the wrong person. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's. But they'll they'll find a way to get your number and yeah. So first thing is, Tori says, call them back. Um, what else can you do? Well, call your bank, right? Like when you had your card frauded and you received a text message that seemed like it was from the bank, but we're like, mm, not one hundred percent sure. You know, like, mm-hmm. right? We called the bank. Hey, was my card really frauded? Did this really happen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you may not, I mean, there may be situations where, like you said, it may be so dire. Like if you know they have your social or something like that, you may want to freeze your credit. Right. Like that might be a situation where you want to put a pause, but if they've just, you know, use your card, you just cancel the card and get a new card. For sure. If you've been frauded deeply, you need to go through other steps than what we're talking about here today. Right. Yeah. We're just talking about the tip of the iceberg today. Right. And share your stories. Like, like we've said, you know, earlier in the podcast, like, Tell your tell your friends, tell your loved ones, because if it's happening to you, it's happening to somebody else. Yeah. Well, and then there are a few sites and stuff we'll put in the show notes where you can report stuff, whether it's, mm-hmm. you know, specific, there's specific sites where you can go through. And so, and I've used them. I've used them to look stuff up, you know, things that have happened that we know of that I've had to kind of verify. And I'll, I'll go to those sites and say, is this something they're investigating or is this yeah. something that's been released to the public that they know about? And yeah. well, that, that site will be helpful because, you know, if, if you're on Instagram or Facebook and you're scrolling and you're getting those shopping ads and you're like, Oh, that shirt is so cute. You know, when you go and you're, you know, a lot of those are fake. Um, mm-hmm. they take your money. You never receive the mm-hmm. product. Right. So I've, some of them are, I've some of them aren't. Right. I mean, right. Right. And that's, that's yes. the world of scams, I mean, right? I know we, <laughs> so we never received yeah. our led lights for our living room. <laughs> well, that was not, not a scam. That was <laughs> oh, that another just, issue. <laughs> okay. All right. So, <laughs> yeah. But, but, you know, is it all bad? I mean, is there is technology leading us down a bad path that's just a headache for everybody? Or is there some is there some silver lining in all well, this? Well, that's what I'm going to say. You know, even though shopping sites, not all are fake. Some are good. And so it's the yeah. same thing with scams. Some of the stuff that you're getting is actually, that's what's so hard about it, is some of these things are trying to protect you and they seem like a scam. And so you question it. But yeah. I, it's yeah. it's the, the world we live in yeah. of verifying what's out there. But there's a flip side of we also wouldn't want to have no technology <laughs> we so, appreciate what it offers us you know, maybe we can use technology to fix technology <laughs> like for example <laughs> i saw there was something you they sell that you put on your phone and it blocks all your other apps except for the most essential apps and it sticks to the outside of your phone and it basically gives you like a little bit more mind space so you're not you know and i i looked at the commercial because it showed up on facebook you know and people were saying oh you could just you know set your privacy that way or your your, yeah. your focus time and i'm like okay i'm not that savvy to like set all my apps up properly you know, I do get blocked, but I got to tell you, I am thinking about only looking at Facebook on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, just because it is, you know, it's very insidious how it just breaks into your life. And next thing you know, you're, you're always looking at something interesting, you know, and, and uh, so Nick's going to get scammed on some productivity <laughs> tool. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, 
this is another tip actually is I go, I always go around those websites, right? So if Facebook advertises something, you know, you go, go, go to your browser Amazon or go search Amazon yourself yep. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that. Yes. Now I use DuckDuckGo for my, for my browser on my phone. Um, there's more privacy and I use a VPN. Um, but you know, that way you can kind of get some other information and I'll tell you what I'm using chat GPT for. And that is to dig through the internet and tell me, uh, the level of reviews that there are like meaning look for dirt on this mm, thing on this side, give me a yeah. summary and it'll, it'll do a good job of actually bringing back all the information and then the links that you can look at to kind yeah. of figure it out. Well, like you said, so like, yeah, I mean, that's what you said. If technology can fix technology, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you can go search the internet, which is here. It's the evil. It's yeah. where they're accessing us, yeah. but you can verify this stuff online too, to, yeah. to see if it's legit. Well, thank you for joining us today. Um, we hope that you found this helpful. And if you have a scam maybe that we didn't talk about today, feel free to leave it in the comments um, or just leave us a comment if you found this helpful. Like, subscribe, share, all the good stuff. Reviews, all of it. We, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again for listening. Until next time, goodbye. Bye, everybody. Hey, it's Nick here. I know that many of our listeners like to read books about financial planning, and I wrote a book called A Wealth of Wisdom, and in it I share a story about my grandpa and his successful retirement. I also point out that his world, now he retired in the 1990s, his world was very different from today's retiree. There are certain things that today's retiree must do to be successful in retirement. So there's no cost for the book. All you have to do is text us the word book to our office line. And I'll get that sent over to you right away. The number is 214-988-9178. Again, you'll text the word book to 214-988-9178. Nick Davis is an investment advisor representative of Brindle and Bay Financial Advisors, a registered investment advisor. This show is for informational purposes only. Any exposure to ideas and financial vehicles discussed should not be considered financial advice or recommendation to buy or sell a financial vehicle. You should consult a qualified financial, tax, or legal professional before taking any action. This program is not endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing company. Insurance licensed in Texas, number 1188639. Brindle and Bay Wealth Management is affiliated with Brindle and Bay Financial Advisors.